I want to take a couple of minutes to clarify a lot of the comments and uh, things that I said about Jim Morrison earlier. I did say that he was the greatest rock star who had ever lived on the planet. I still stand by that. Totally believe it. So many different reasons why. But there's another side to that as well. And I think Jim, the person, while he was on stage, he was the rock star. And I think he enjoyed it. I think he reveled in it. He made a big game out of it. It was fun for a while. But the truth of the matter is that there was also Jim Morrison, the person. And the way that he was portrayed in the Oliver Stone film, which I had said earlier too that the rest of the Doors just hated for lots of different reasons, but mainly because they just thought it was completely sensationalized. And Ray Manzarek has even said that it was literally 75 or 80 percent fiction. And it wasn't meant to be a biopic. I don't think Oliver Stone set out to just create a documentary about the doors. That's been done by other people. I think he was creating a movie that he wanted people to be entertained by. And he sensationalized the character of Jim Morrison, which was played, of course, by Val Kilmer, and condensed a person's life, short life, 27 years, into a two and a half hour movie. And of course had to make it as wild, crazy, and ob obnoxious as he possibly could. And unfortunately though, I think that that did not reflect on the true character or the true person that Jim Morrison actually really was. He, yeah, had drinking problems. That's been definitely well documented. And most of the issues that he faced in his life were probably self-imposed for the most part and he he caused himself a lot of problems with his drinking and ultimately paid the price for it with a short life but by those that knew him jim morrison was described as a very thoughtful person a friendly person actually a fun person to be around not that raving crazed drunken lunatic that was in the Oliver Stone movie. And remember, that movie came out in 1991. That was 20 years after his death. It's already been 30 years since the movie came out. And so in 1991, a lot of the people that had known Jim personally were actually still alive. And I don't think they appreciated what they saw. Jim was described as a caring person and often had times of calm and quiet. He was a writer, you know? He would write poetry. Some of them didn't even become Doors songs. They just remained poetry. And he was obviously highly intelligent. Uh, IQ of definitely in the genius level. 165, 170 are the things that I have read about him. Jim Morrison had a bit of a dark side to him. That's, that's pretty well known. And the Doors in general, you know, they were so much different from their peers at that time. The material that they were writing, if it represented Los Angeles at all, it was often said that it represented Los Angeles after dark. Whereas their contemporaries here in Laurel Canyon uh, were singing about flower power and the different things that were going on in the summer of love and they didn't really seem to fit into that mold. They didn't really want to have anything much to do with the hippie movement. They were not hippies <laughs> at all. They have often even said that themselves and openly kind of mocked in a way that whole era. And I just find it odd, too, that Morrison actually even lived up here in Laurel Canyon. He seems to be kind of the odd duck out of all of the other people that we have discussed and talked about and all of the other folks that lived up here, musicians, songwriters. 
I'm not really sure he hung around too much with the Joni Mitchells or the Neil Youngs or the David Crosbys or the Cass Elliots. I'm quite honestly not sure who he hung around with at all other than his bandmates and Pamela. He seemed possibly maybe like he was a little bit of a loner at times. But all in all, he's, he's always been described as a kind person, but he had a drinking problem. And the drinking problem caused a lot of problems, obviously. And at some point, he just lost control of it. I think maybe at, in the beginning it was fun and it was dangerous and it was exciting. But then later on, it just caught up with him. And as we know, in the last few months of his life, he was living in Paris. And so right after the LA Woman recording sessions in 1971 wrapped up, he took off. He told Ray Manzarek and the rest of the Doors that he was headed to Paris to straighten himself out, to try to get himself clean, all the things that they wanted to hear. And so he was encouraged. He was told that's a great idea. But it was never really discussed until later if he was even coming back. Honestly, my opinion, I don't think he was ever planning to come back. Now, I don't think he necessarily thought that he was going to die of a heart attack in the bathtub two months after he arrived there. That probably was unexpected. But I think it was kind of open-ended. There's theories that... Um, I don't even want to get into the theories about him faking his death. Those just seem really far-fetched at best. And obviously it's been 50-plus years now. And he was headed on his way out anyway at that point in his life. The damage was done. And he was probably headed that way anyway. But in terms of the other circumstances in his life that was going on at that time, he was facing some very serious legal charges. In fact, he'd actually been sentenced to six months hard labor uh, for the unfortunate incident that took place in Miami in 1969. I'm not going to get into those details. If you want to know, go look it up. It's well documented. You'll know what he did or what he was accused of. And he was probably leaving the country and not planning to come back. That's my theory. I think he knew he was in big trouble and maybe he felt like uh, the doors had run their course. We just really don't know because it ended really abruptly and really quickly right after he got there. So we'll never really know what his plans were what he would have become, would he have been able to straighten himself out, get sober, get back on track? We just don't know. It seems unlikely, but you never know. He could have pulled it off. I wish he had. I think it was a great loss. I think it was very unfortunate. And I think there are lessons to be learned there. No one's invincible. We're not bulletproof. And if your life spirals out of control because of substance abuse or alcohol abuse, I can only imagine how unbelievably difficult it would be to overcome that, live a normal life, and especially under the pressures of being an international celebrity like he was I'm sure that probably didn't help him out those kinds of pressures that he dealt with and the expectations there was a lot of people depending on him 